What's up, Glue Dots? Today I have two DIYs for you. Well, kind of one, but two, but they go together, so it could be one. <laughs> and I'm using a Home Depot product that's reasonably inexpensive, and anybody can find it at your local Home Depot. And I'm really excited to show it to you. I've used some Dollar Tree products combined with those and came up with something fabulous. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I have an Instagram, EP Midnight Crafter, a Pinterest EP Midnight Crafter, and a really great Facebook group called Midnight Crafter Glue Dots where you can post your creative ideas and what you're working on to help give me some inspiration as well. So let's get right to crafting. I got these tiles at Home Depot and they come on a cardboard sheet. This particular set of tiles is Ice Beveled Subway. And you can see there's, they're all attached here on the sheet and they have a backing that they come on. This set of tiles is the Chilcot Bright Subway tiles. I've already pulled some of them off the backing and they come off really easily. So just like that, you can pull them right off. And you're gonna wanna pull off four of them for the smaller candle holder. This whole pack of tiles here, there are 12 tiles on here and it's just about $12. So I know we would get super excited if we found this piece alone for a dollar at Dollar Tree. So just the fact that it's, think about it as buying in bulk. So there's 12 of them for $12. So it's kind of the same pricing. What we're gonna do now is use a straight edge razor and go along the sides of these and clean off any residual glue that might be there. Some pieces have more than others and it is gonna show in your finished project. So you do wanna make sure you clean all that off. It comes comes off pretty easily. You just scrape it with your straight edge razor and it doesn't scrape the glass. I was a little worried about that initially, but it really is not a problem at all. Make sure you clean off all four sides and sometimes the backing hangs a little longer off of the ends and you can see a little bit on this piece that it's doing that. You just wanna go through and just take your razor and go ahead and cut that excess part right off because you do need these all to be the same length. Usually it's just a little bit of residual glue. So clean off four pieces if you want to do just the one level candle, the shorter one, and eight pieces if you'd like to do the taller version and 12 pieces if you're gonna do both. Next, I'm gonna be using the Tumbling Tower Game blocks, and I'm gonna need two for each of my four pieces. So we'll need eight of these all together. They don't all have to be brown or light brown. It just doesn't matter. It just happened to be what was in my box. Now, flipping our pieces upside down, I'm gonna use my Gorilla Clear Grip, or you can use E6000 or anything similar to that. and. I'm gonna put a little bit of this and my hot glue on each one of my blocks. And this is what my plan's gonna be. So let me show you with one, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of my hot glue in the middle, and then very quickly at the end and at the edge, but not overlapping that edge, we're gonna place our piece down. You can see that it's up to the edge, but not past it in any way. It's almost a smidgen inside from the edge. And we're gonna put two of those blocks on each one of our pieces, just like that, on all four. I like to put the adhesive on all of my pieces first, just to make it quicker and a little more streamlined, and then just the hot glue one piece at a time. Once you have all those pieces, we're gonna start putting these together. So the way we're gonna be doing that is each edge will get overlapped and glued to the side of the blocks of the other edge, right? So we're just gonna need to put some glue, the same way we put it on these blocks, we're gonna be putting it on the sides of these and putting together two at a time. This time I'm putting the glue more towards the backside so it doesn't ooze out to the front. 
And my battery died right while I was doing that, so I'm going to show that to you one more time. This is how they look when you put them together. So I'm going to now do that one more time. Well, actually a couple more times to get this all put together, but one more time so you can see. Line your outside sides up and make sure it's flush and that there's no space showing on the side. And then we're gonna glue on our last piece. We're gonna go in there from the inside and line up some hot glue right along the side of that block. And you can see how our basic thing is pretty much done here. It comes together pretty quickly and easily. The next step is to take a piece of your silver plastic tray from Dollar Tree. This is a scrap piece I have. We're going to be cutting a square piece to cover this piece here. I found that the easiest way to do that is to cut two straight sides of your piece of silver tray and place those on here because these are not necessarily exactly a perfect square. So by cutting your two straight sides, you can put it in place here. And then I like to use an X-Acto knife so I can make a little score mark or just a little scratch mark so I can see and line up so that you can see how much you're gonna need to get the piece to fit perfectly within there. Better a little too big than too small because you can always trim it down. Make sure your piece fits in there nicely and then you're gonna add, again, both E6000 and hot glue to get that to stick. There you go. Now we're gonna be taking these pieces from Dollar Tree. There's two to a pack. They are just called candle holders, I don't know. And we're simply gonna be gluing one to the top of our base here, of our stand. And again, I'm gonna use my Gorilla Glue and my hot glue. Okay, so I have now made two of these. You can keep two of them at this height if you like that and just use your little candle holder bases, one on each one, so you have two matching pairs. Or if you'd like to, you can make one small one and one double height one. So for the double height one, all you're gonna do is simply put glue on the base of this and glue two of them together and then you'll have them stacked. Of course you will have the seam line. It's really not bad at all. It looks pretty good in the long run with everything going on, but if that does bother you, you could put some bling wrap in there or something. Although I think this just looks really nice and really modern as it is, so I'm going to leave it. For gluing the two pieces together, I'm only going to use my Gorilla Glue and then I'm only putting it towards the inner part because I don't want that also to ooze out in that seam and to show. I'm gonna let this one dry overnight and are you guys giving me a thumbs up yet? Come on, you gotta love this project. This is amazing. Hit that subscribe button down below if you wanna see more things like this. For these subway tiles, it's a tad bit different because the back of these has a bit of a bevel to it. Also, the sides have a little bit of overspray of spray paint um, from whatever they sprayed the backing with. So for these, you're going to, because of the bevel, glue your block on about halfway between the outer edge here and this bevel line. So just about like that. Because these have that painted edge and I'd like it to be a little more uniform, I'm gonna be using my Crafter Square metallic marker, the silver one, and just going over some of that white to make it silver. It doesn't match exactly with the other silver, but it does look a lot better than that white white that's showing. And for the top of this one, just to change it up a bit, I took some of the little votive candles in case you can't find the other ones, and I spray painted the inside with just the silver metallic Rust-Oleum paint. So it gives this look on the outside. You can always spray the outside if you'd like to. Um, either way, it gives a really nice shine. Maybe even spraying the outside would be better. It's up to you. And we're gonna glue that one into place on top here. 
I'm going to show you all of these. I made a discovery. This morning when I couldn't sleep when I woke up, of course my mind went to crafting and I started thinking about this paint in here on the seams on the sides and wondering if I tried scratching that off like I did with the glue, what it would do. And guess what? It comes off! <laughs> I was so excited about this because that was one of the things that I felt like was kind of a drag about this one because I really love that silvery look, but I did not like how this white paint was on the sides. So I had to let you guys know this just so that you can see. I've already done it on these sides. What a difference. Oh my goodness. I love it. The first step for this next project is to remove all of the pieces from that net backing and just have the plain pieces. You don't have to worry this time about scraping the paint off the side because there's only going to be a couple small short sides that it's going to be showing on so we'll scrape that off when we get to it. Next we're going to take one of these Dollar Tree signs, it doesn't matter what sign it is, it happens to be that I have an Easter sign. and as long as the size is the right size, which most of them are pretty standard, but it should be the exact length of what your tile pieces are. We're going to turn that sign upside down and place our tile pieces because we're going to be trimming this down and we need to know how short to make it. I'm going to actually trim from this side so I don't have to worry about the holes. So I'm going to put my first tile right up to the edge just like that so we know where it's going to be. Then these you can lay down because we just need the length. Two of those and then one more standing up here on the end. Take a pencil and mark it. I'm going to use my square to make sure that I have a straight line. And then we're going to start scoring that line with a box cutter. <clears throat> I lost a little bit of footage there, but all I did is continue to score till the line was nice and deep and then just break it off. It breaks off really easily. Sometimes you have a little bit of the edge because of this paper that's on this other side, but then once it was broken off, I just went over my score line again, where my score line was, my edge, and that extra little piece cut right off. Next we're going to be taking our silver oval plastic tray from Dollar Tree and you do want the oval one because the round one is not quite long enough. We're just going to flip that upside down and take our sign, place it on the top here and we're going to trace out our sign. Now this doesn't fit completely either but that's okay because part of this is going to be covered with our tile. Center your sign as best you can so that there's very little of each corner that they're kind of evenly hanging off and then I'm just going to use my silver metallic marker from Crafter's Square in Dollar Tree because the pencil doesn't really seem to show up very well and at least I'll be able to see my line clearly this way. Now we're going to go through and cut off this entire edge here of our tray because we only really need this flat part. Now I'm going to cut off my excess and just keep my triangle shape. So you'll have this piece here and it should fit right on top of your sign. And you may need to trim a little bit. Looks like I'll need to trim a tiny bit. We're going to be putting this piece aside for right now. Don't worry so much about these edges that are curving up. They're going to flatten out. They're also going to get covered a little bit with the tiles. So it really won't show much in those corners. What we're going to do next is use a little bit of Mod Podge. And I'm just using some extra fine glitter. This one happens to be from Arteza. And we're going to be painting this edge here and putting glitter on it. This way we'll have a much nicer look to our edge and you, it won't be obvious that it was a sign from Dollar Tree. <laughs> now anything will work, school glue, whatever. It doesn't have to be Mod Podge, but it does kind of soak into this chipboard. So you do need to put a pretty good amount on there. Then just go ahead and sprinkle it with glitter. 
Okay. I'm going to do that to all four sides and then I'm going to let it dry really well before I move on to the next step. Once all four sides are done and you let it dry, if you'd like to, you can go over it with another coat of Mod Podge on top of this so that it will keep that glitter in place from falling off. So I'm going to show you a little trick to help to get these corners to lay a little flatter. Now they're not going to lay perfectly smooth and flat, but they're going to not flip up as much as they are and they'll be much easier to glue down. If you flip it to the back side and have one of these heat tools, mine is from Stampin' Up, but there are so many of them out there. I really recommend this tool for so many different things and I'll leave a link below if you're interested at all in getting something like this. But what I'm going to do when I'm having this ready because this plastic gets really hot, I'm going to heat this plastic up until I see it start to slightly change form and then I'm going to take this and press it on there not only to help cool it off but because it's nice and smooth and flat too. I don't know if you could see that, but it kind of gives a little bit of a warped thing. So I'm going to do a little bit more and then when I feel like it's doing it, I'll press this down again. But anyway, that's going to help to get your edges a little flatter. We're back to our sign here. You could pick either side to make the top or bottom. It, there, neither one is really going to show unless you pick it up and look underneath. Um, what I am actually doing is looking at, this has a slight curve this way, so I'm actually going to make that um, so that it's underneath, so that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, we're going to be gluing on our piece here, our mirrored piece, onto the surface. And I'm going to do that using E6000 as well as the hot glue. We especially want our edges to glue down really well. I'm going to do a little bit of this at a time because I don't want my hot glue to um, solidify and create any bulk. So I'm just going to lay some of it down and line it up and then work my way across. So you definitely want to make sure that that is lined up well before you put anything down. Now we're going to start gluing our tile pieces onto our base and for that we're also going to be using the Gorilla Clear Grip or E6000 and just a tiniest of drops of hot glue to kind of hold it in place. But other than that, really, um, it's the really your adhesive that's going to be doing all of the work. And make sure you line that up properly right away because that hot glue is going to hold that into place immediately. We're going to be doing the same thing with our side pieces, gluing those into place as well. And then with our end cap. Don't forget, which I actually did forget, to put a little bit of glue on the inside of this piece so that your piece will stick also to the side piece and also here. But again, that one you're just going to want to use the Gorilla Glue or the, the E6000 because you don't want any thickness whatsoever in between. Now to give a little bit of stability to that inside, we're going to use our tumbling tower blocks again. and. Mostly you can use hot glue on this. It does stick really well to the inside of these tiles, but I would usually add E6000 uh, so that you're just, I don't know, it's like insurance, I guess. <laughs> I'm putting that right there in the corner. I'm also going to put them here at the seams as well just to keep that sturdy. So I want to show you a couple things. Um, one thing do make note to put something, when you flip this upside down and you're working, put cloth or something under because I did get some scratches on this silver part. The other thing is because these corners, I'm not really loving the way they're looking, I'm going to be putting the last two tiles that I have here on the ends to cover that. But when you look from the side, you can still kind of see in there a little bit in these corners. So before I do glue these on, I'm going to put glitter to fill those spaces in. Now this is kind of, you guys are getting to see what happens when, you know, things don't work out like I think they're going to work out. In my mind, I was thinking 
anyway, I was thinking this was going to be a tray and that these were going to be up here covering and I forgot that this was actually the top. So now I'm having to rethink it. But anyway, I'm going to be putting some glue and glitter on these corners so that when you do see them a little bit from the side view, they won't look bad. That seemed to help a little bit with these corners and they make them a little more acceptable to me, though not completely, but that's okay because as I said, we're gonna cover them. So the last thing I'm gonna do is put some hot glue in E6000 and glue these into place. And well, you guys got to see troubleshooting in action. <laughs> so here we go. I lied, that's not actually the last thing I'm gonna do. The last thing I'm gonna do is turn my box and these edges that are here that have the paint, we're gonna go through and scrape whichever edges are showing that actually do have the paint on them. And then you're also gonna to wanna to do that to your pieces that are going up here on top. So you're gonna to have to clean those edges as well all the way around. Then we're gonna be done. <laughs> 